Welcome back to Badger Blitz TV, your Rivals.com destination for all things Wisconsin athletics. Once again, I'm Matt Perkins, joined, as always, by my good friend, Rivals.com national analyst, Clint Cosgrove. Like we always say, buddy, it's the best time of the week. Best time of the week, Perko! (laughs) Let's be awesome today. Let's be awesome, man. Let's Let's have a good time. Um, as always, we have awesome friends in the Badger's Den, and this has been a question that's been coming up for a while now. Uh, Super Badger out there on the West Coast wants to know about defensive line recruiting because it seems to be the one position that is still a need in this 2024 class. And, you know, the Badgers brought in a lot of guys for officials over the summer. They got a couple, you know, they got Hank Weber out of Tennessee who had a really scary injury the other night. Um, yeah, I heard. Uh, yeah, last uh, on, on Friday night here in Middle Tennessee. Thankfully, he's good. He is, he's good. He's a he's hundred percent. We'll be back playing in two weeks. So, uh, shout out to Hank for you know avoiding uh, you know a, a big injury there. That's, big uh, Hank. Yeah. So he's uh you know I know his team is struggling here. Uh, Brentwood Academy in Middle Tennessee. They're one of the stronger programs, but they're one and six this year. It's been a, <laughs> know, been it's a tough year. It's been a tough yeah. year for those boys. So. But we're glad Hank is well. But we think Coach Scruggs is still looking to add some friends for Hank and the gang on the defensive line for this incoming class. And those are going to be shirts sur- eventually. Hank, Hank and the and gang the ga- will be the Hank defensive like, line. <laughs> like cool in the gang, just Hank and the yeah. gang. Yeah. So, you know, it, it's been a topic of discussion for a while on the boards. Obviously, like we said, the defensive line is a little bit thin and switching to the 3 3 5. They're looking for very specific body types to do different kinds of things in new roles than what they had under Jim Leonard and the previous <clears throat> defensive coaching staff. So uh, the question that Soup wants to know is that there, are there any more 2024 targets like either getting interest from UW um, or is there, you know, who are guys they could be targeting maybe for a flip, um, you know, whether it's from, you know, uh, you know, guys that they brought in earlier. I know one of the names that sort of has come up because he started taking visits again, even though, He's committed to Washington as Dominic Kirks, and he yeah. was on a um, official uh, in Wisconsin in June. But let's what's the latest on Dominic Kirks? Is we've broken down the film here. He's a player I personally really like the upside of as uh, as a rush end. But what's the latest on Dominic Kirks and D line recruiting in general here for UW? Yeah, well, I mean, D line recruiting in general is always crazy. The closer you get to signing day, it's especially crazy this year because I feel like there's a really elite group at the top. Um, but it kind of falls off after that elite group, not saying that there's not a lot of good players that won't eventually be studs, but it's just not as deep in terms of elite players from top to bottom. I would say the, the, the top players are some of the best I've seen, uh, as you get down the line a little bit, maybe it get, it, it, there's a, a significant drop off, but Dominic Kirks is a kid that, you know, after seeing him in person, uh, I was, I, I, it was at the Under Armour camp when I saw him and I was like, this kid is a four star all day. He is absolutely freakishly built, great personality, smart kid, heck of a football player, incredible upside as good as he is right now, you know, committed to Washington. Uh, that staff has Midwest ties, obviously with, uh, William Inge, uh, I believe is the DC and then Kalen DeBoer, the head coach is a Midwest guy. Um, now, he took the visit to Ohio State last weekend. We have messaged. Uh, he he's never really talked about you know flipping or anything like that. It was almost like, hey, I'm going to Ohio State this weekend. And I was like, oh, oh, awesome, awesome, okay. Um, you know, but he does seem like a guy who's open to looking around, which is kind of surprising with Mich- our Washington success. But also sometimes, you know you realize that's pretty far from home. And if, if that's part of his decision, I know he's close with his family. Um, you know, and Wisconsin was a finalist of his. So he's a kid who could circle back. Um, and then there's a couple other kids, uh, you know, like, I don't know if, if Francis, uh, Brew, Brew, however, Brew, however I pronounce it, the pick. Well, I, I, th- I think, I, I think it's Brie Wu, but, um, okay, I could Brie be Wu. mistaken. Sorry, sorry, Francis, when you see this, uh, we were just messaging the other night, but uh, sorry when you see this. I don't know. He seems solid with Pitt, but, you know, sometimes you hear things about kids maybe looking around. Um, you know, Pitt has a history of putting on defensive tackles. There's no question about that. But he's had a heck of a year. He's a guy who would definitely have a chance to be a difference maker in the in the Big Ten. Um, and then uh, you can also look at guys who really, uh, you know, are committed to 
non-power schools. And uh, two that come to mind, you've got the Max Mogelson kid from Minnesota. He's committed to UNLV. I thought that was a great pickup for them. He's a bigger, stronger uh, type, more of a nose, um, you know, not freakish athletically, but a very good football player. Uh, I don't know if he'd be, you know, the top guy on their board, but he's a guy you could circle back to, especially as things get thin. But then the guy that I really, really like, and he's committed to Marshall, and Marshall obviously is a phenomenal program right now, uh, but they could also lose their head coach to a bigger school. And uh, it's it's not a Big Ten school. And, and this is Javon Hammonds. And the kid was, uh, I think, 6'5", 230 at our rivals camp. Um, for me, he would be the number one Midwest not, uh, non-Power 5 commit that would be a, a flip guy, in my opinion. Uh, I haven't talked to Wisconsin about this. I don't know if they've you know even circled back or, or taken a close look. But you know, I just loved him at our camp. His film looks really good this year. He looks bigger, faster, more athletic. And I think we're going to take a look at it, Perko. Oh, yeah. You know we're going to take a look at it, Clint. That's what we do. Let's let's turn it on right here, That's buddy. That's what we do. Yeah, so, um, you know, uh, does he start with the two sacks? Yeah, I mean, look at the burst right there. That looks a little sped up. But um, he flies off the ball. You're going to see it again here. He is a guy who can rush the passer. Um, you know, he, he just he's athletic. He's a little bit of a long strider, but he's got that short area twitch. Um, look at that. To go inside, stick your foot in the ground, and then change direction and chase down a back on an outside play, um, that's pretty impressive. You look at the motor, he crashes down an entire side of the line. Um, he's just a kid who has so much upside. You know, uh, you see him drop back there in coverage, and then look, as soon as he identifies the play, once he turns it on, he's going to go and try to kill you. He's trying to take the soul out of that guy. And, you know, to me, it's 6'5", 230 right now. He's a kid who can be 6'5", 260. He moves like a skill guy or at least a linebacker. And uh, so he'd be perfect in the scheme. He's a guy who can rush the passer. He'll be able to hold the edge. Um, you know, you could kick him inside to a four eye. He could hold up in there. He could do a little bit of everything. But you love his motor. You love the way he runs. You love the way he hits. And um, to me, uh, no offense to Marshall because they would beat most teams in the top 25 outside of, you know, the teams in the top. Uh, they built a heck of a program there and there's been some great players to go through there. But to me, uh, I think Javon, if, if I'm going to look at, you know, uh, a non power five guy to flip, you know, he's, he's at the top of my list probably yeah, at, at me, least from the Midwest. And- yeah, and to me, one of the things that stands out about him is he, he, you talk about that athleticism, but he's also got length. He's also got some long arms. He's got, you know, but but it's not like they're spindly arms, right? You know, they're, yeah. they're long, thicker arms. And like you said, like, I, I could see him at 260 without too much of a real, real issue there, right? Uh, because yeah. he's, he's got the frame, he's got the shoulders, he's got the length in the arms. And I, like, like you said, like, I think he is someone who really could actually be a difference maker at the power five level, just looking at sort of the combination of raw athleticism and motor. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, he, he really impressed me at the camp. Um, he, he was, he was a very good player. I don't think he even had stars before then. Um, and, and you love his motor too. He's a competitor. So, uh, I was shocked. I was kind of surprised when he, he committed to Marshall, but maybe, I don't know there's, maybe there's a special connection there. I mean, look at his awareness and body control and trying to find the ball and he's off balance and still trying to stick it to someone like you love that. That's a big time style football player right there. And so um, obviously Marshall's having a lot of success, but you know, you, you couple that with, uh, and he had offers from like West Virginia. And I, I don't know if they filled up at the positions or whatnot. And he was just trying to save a spot, uh, which is very smart to do, especially if you got an offer like Marshall, a school on the rise. Um, but uh, you know, just to me, if you're in need of defensive linemen, he is a kid, especially being in the Midwest, being from, uh, you know, our, our Wisconsin's recruiting territory, uh, especially, you know, the, the fickle, uh, groups recruiting territory that he'd be a guy that they, they, they should at least take a look at if it's a position of need that they're looking to add at. Yeah. Especially, you know, it's an Ohio kid. We know how many connections this staff has to the state of Ohio. So I think he would be a, a really nice fit and could fit into, you know, what super badger wants to see, which is another rush end for Wisconsin. We both have to go back and do some more work. We, gotta go. but we appreciate 
everyone tuning in to a bit of an abbreviated uh, Badger Blitz TV today, but you know, we got to bring it to you every single week. Speaking of that, make sure you're on badgerblitz.com multiple times every single day with the best information anywhere in the known and unknown galaxy on uh, Wisconsin down. sports information. Uh, so over at badgerblitz.com until next time, he is Clint Cosgrove. I'm Matt Perkins, and we will see you, see you in the den. In the den.